Hello everyone, welcome back to Crypto Malaysia. My name is Aaron and today we're going to be talking about a project called Kilt. So what is a kilt? Well, when you hear a kilt, you usually imagine a Scottish man in a skirt. And this is why this project especially chose this name because in the olden days when you have a kilt on, according to the pattern on your kilt, people will be able to identify which tribe you're from. So that's uh, exactly like all of us, right? Uh, you know, my name is Aaron and kind of like, yeah, I mean, you know, I have one identity, which is myself, but uh, I would also have various uh, so-called identity that I have on, let's say, uh, my social media like Facebook or maybe LinkedIn. I will have a different profile. Uh, so all these, um, um, how do you say, different profiles in the kilt world, they actually call it uh, credentials, right? So you can have one account, okay, which is a crypto account that you control, and uh, that's your uh, essentially your identity and your wallet. And that identity can uh, you can attach various credentials to that identity. So what do you mean by that, right? So it means that, for example, um, you know, um, you know, anyone would have sort of like a few documents, right? So you would have like a birth certificate, you would have maybe your driving license, your identity card, and you have your passport, right? So all these are called credentials because you know they're not your identity, so to say, right? They identify who you are. But, you know, each one of those are for a very specific purpose, right? So, for example, if you're, um, let's say, uh, well, buying crypto on, uh, on Binance, right? So, Binance would ask you for identity to do AML KYC above a certain amount, right? But in actual fact, when uh, Binance asks you for your AML KYC, they want to identify, number one, like who you are. And probably uh, number two could be age, right? Number three could be uh, your nationality, right? So what if we have a system where we do not give information unnecessarily? So all we do is uh, we go to, uh, for example, Binance, okay? And we use this uh, system that we have. And uh, we say like, okay, Binance, you want to verify me for AML KYC? Then I'm just going to give you whatever is necessary. I'm just giving you my name or my age or, you know, and my nationality. And as long as Binance can verify that is a real identity, then uh, that is job done, right? And, uh, and that also minimizes the amount of data that uh, Binance actually have uh, on the server. So, so this is a really big thing if you uh, think about what happened with Ledger where they leaked two to three million um, email addresses. It's not only email, it was uh, the name, it was the phone number, it was the address, you know. It, it was a lot of details that can uh, make it extremely dangerous for someone with crypto, especially in the dangerous country. Uh, perhaps like uh, Venezuela or you know some other failed states. So so this is something that is uh, becoming increasingly important, and I think a lot of people is going to pay attention to it. And the entire idea that you know you should have control of your own identity and you should have control of your own data. I mean that that idea is emerging, and that's exactly like what the decentralized uh, Web 3.0 is all about. Okay. So we're going to uh, go through a little introduction and just skim through uh, what this project is about. So they, they do have a so-called video that you can watch. Okay, I probably won't go through it. Um, and this uh, basically there is uh, several so-called um, roles inside the, uh, the kilt uh, system, right? So you have the claimer. So if I were to claim that I'm Aaron, so I would be the claimer, okay? And uh, for example, the government would be the tester, right? So the government obviously they have you know some data on me, and they are the they are the authority to be able to attest that okay, Aaron is Aaron. In fact, Aaron, right? Okay, and I'm linked to all my data, my you know biometrics data or whatever data that they they have on me, okay. And then there is also the role of a verifier. So the verifier would be able to uh, verify that. You know, uh, they can check, well, they can receive the claim, uh, the, the data from the claimer, and they can go to a tester and verify that this data is all real. So in essence, that's what it's about, okay? Now, um, there's uh, obviously a kilt coin uh, that's, uh, that's available on this blockchain, but I won't go too deep into it. I think mainly what we should um, understand from, uh, okay, 
So, so I want to give you an overview of uh, the Kill uh, ecosystem. Now, the Kill ecosystem is actually not just about identity on a blockchain because you know that's uh, you know that's a very important problem to solve, but that still won't you know give the entire like a really big value proposition. So, uh, Kill actually has another project. Now, this project I believe is funded by Web3 as well. So, Kill has another project called Polymac, and inside Polymac they actually utilize their decentralized ID uh, capabilities in this particular blockchain. Now, what, what is Polymac? Well, Polymac is essentially a, a blockchain where you can issue tokens for the purpose of fundraising, right? So when you think about that, you immediately think about the Ethereum ERC-20, right? And this is exactly what it's supposed to be. It is supposed to be the ERC-20 of the Polkadot world. So when you issue a token, let's say, you know, you want to raise funds, your project, you want to raise funds, uh, in the Ethereum ecosystem, um, things are a little bit difficult to manage because uh, you would issue the tokens, but to handle the sales, you would need you know some other systems to manage that, and especially if you need AML KYC, again you know you need another system. So in Polymac, uh, they minimize that work for you. So so they carve out a structure where in fact you can do the AML KYC for your customers, uh, sorry for your, for the buyers of your token, and you can actually issue these tokens to them. Now the best part is uh, they do not have to switch, right? So, so all these projects that's uh, issuing on Polymac, they envision that these projects will eventually have like a substrate blockchain of their own. So if they have a substrate blockchain of their own, okay, let's say I launch a coin called uh, A coin, all right? And A coin decides to be one day a blockchain of its own. And I want to migrate to the substrate uh, world, okay? So I would build out my entire substrate blockchain, test it out, everything, deploy it, and I would be able to import that token, right? So all those token holders, they wouldn't need to, like, you know, do anything. They wouldn't have to, like, you know, go through a transfer or a bridge or anything. Uh, but they will essentially get their tokens on a uh, substrate blockchain. So that's uh, this is what I understand, and this is uh, something that's uh, really, really critical uh, for this uh, so-called um, um, uh, polka dot, right? So, so this is really cool. Okay, this is one of the stuff they're doing. They're doing a lot of other stuff that is uh, actually not really announced. Okay, so for example, if you were to launch a token or D app on uh, Poly, uh, sorry, on Kill, right? So if you launch on Kill, uh, you would actually have access to even uh, a function like a staking function, right? So as you know, a lot of uh, token models would actually require people to, you know, for example, hold a certain amount of token and stake it in uh, for some returns or maybe for some privileges, right? And even now, there's a kind of like a new kind of system where um, it's gaining popularity, where it's not only about staking the tokens and uh, earning some rewards from that, but also like you should stake the token. And if you're not performing, then they can actually slash uh, some of your rewards or they can slash some of the coins that you stake. Yeah. So all that is uh, super interesting. And if you're interested in this project, I suggest uh, you, you read out about it because you're going to hear a lot more from Kilt. Uh, in the coming months, there's blockchain is subject. Um, well, it's a uh, plan to be launched around March uh, 2021, right? And obviously, if they launch, uh, there would be a substrate chain. But the whole deal with Polkadot is uh, you actually need to be connected to the relay chain. And the only way you can do that is uh, either you obtain a parachain slot, or you uh, you can uh, rent a so-called parathread slot, right? So all that has not been done. Uh, now, I know there's a lot of interest in the Polkadot ecosystem, and the truth is that even though they have 100 slots for parachain auctions, um, the reality is that there's not many um, serious projects in uh, working in advanced stages uh, in the Polkadot ecosystem. So very, very likely uh, what we're going to get is something like uh, perhaps only five or six projects uh, by June uh, 2021 in, uh, in Polkadot. So uh, that's it for today. If you have any questions, uh, put it down below or reach out to me on my Telegram, uh, Facebook, or any other social media. Uh, smash that like button, uh, subscribe to get the latest update, and uh, I'll see you next time.